Hey everybody, uh, this is George Williams. I'm the Next Search Catalog Coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System. I'm Christopher Brannon with the Coeur d'Alene Public Library and the Cooperative Information Network. And this is uh, another one in the long continuing saga of Koha training videos by Koha US. Um, so this week we're going to talk about uh, a problem that I had a real life encounter with just a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, it has to do with uh, extra spaces and unnecessary spaces in item level input uh, fields on the on the mark record uh, yeah, in the item problematic. record. Problematic. Yes, it can be. Uh, you know, it uh, Koha does a lot of things. You know, since uh, if, if you put too many spaces at the beginning of a title, the web browser is going to remove those extra spaces. Um, if you put double spaces in between words in a, in a item record field, like a call number or a note, you'll never see that in the web browser. But if you're running a report um, and somebody's put 50 spaces in front of a call number, then those aren't going to sort properly because SQL does see those spaces, um, even though the web browser doesn't. And you can find our videos on the Learn page under video playlists. And we've got uh, not just our videos here, but we've got, uh, you know, we've got the videos we've been doing here and links to the different different seasons. We've got the Bywater Minute, uh, Monday Minutes, and their deep dive. We should probably put the PTFS is doing a series of videos now. We should probably get a good playlist on there with their videos, but yeah, I'll also point out, uh, yeah, uh, right now, we've got also got a link here to Koha Con 22. If you uh, the Koha US conference has morphed into the Koha Con International Conference, it's going to be here where I live in Lawrence, Kansas. Never mind the Boise State on my on my sweatshirt, uh, but it is going to be here in September. And so, if you're interested in coming to that, there's information on our website about that too. So, Looking let me. Um, let me hop over. Um, I'm going to start off in uh, Next Search Catalog system, and I've got my um, my uh, shelf list report. Uh, this is the big report that many libraries use for weeding and all kinds of information. And right here, you'll see an example of what I was saying. Uh, this is a report run. I was looking for adult book fiction. Adults the location, book is the item type, and the collection code is fiction. And they should sort in call number order, but if you look here, you'll notice that fiction king is at the top, followed by a couple of nonfiction books, followed by some biographies, and we get down here. So why is fiction king at the top? If I slide over here and go to that item record, um, somebody put a space at the in front of the F. So it's not sorting correctly in the report because somebody's put some spaces there. Right. And so uh, in particular, the, the reason that this came up as an issue is I had a the librarian at one of our libraries, they are trying to use the label creator, which not all of our libraries use. And they found that they had some weird issues going on with the label creator because they have some call numbers they want to split the call number at every space so that it, the label would have, you know, F, author's name, maybe something else. And what they found is on some of their um, some of their call numbers, they had four or five lines. And so they wanted a report that would, but even then they were still seeing weird stuff. And so they wanted a report so they could see how many call numbers had more than four lines in them. And so I created this report and I'm just going to run it uh, for anything with greater than nine lines on a spine label. And so what the label creator sees when you tell it to, it sees every space as a line break. And so really what this report is doing is it's looking for how many spaces are there in a call number. And I figured we would have a few um, a few things that had more than more than three or four lines, and um, 
what I've got it going on here is this report takes every space and it turns it into a pipe. And we have some here, you know, like this one, somebody fell asleep on the space bar <laughs> after they finished, um, yeah. after they finished uh, typing in the, typing in the call number. And there are a lot of these that start with spaces. This one here, Xbox, and it's got about five or six spaces in front of it. Yeah. And then it's got a bunch of spaces after it. The longest one I found had 284 spaces oh. uh, in the call number. And so that's why the label creator was kind of going nuts there is because it's, you know, when, when it sees a double space, like there's this one here that's got JF and then it's got like, you know, what's that about seven spaces and then JF and then space and SNI and then like uh, 20 spaces at the end of it. And so I said, there's got to be an easier way to, to do this, to, you know, why is it letting, letting people do that? So I wrote some jQuery, um, which is what I'm good at. And so I said, you know, I, I looked at our item records and I said, is there anything in the item record? Is there any situation in the item record where there needs to be a leading or a trailing space where there needs to be double spaces? And I couldn't find any instances of that. So what I did is I wrote some simple jQuery. I'm, gonna, I'm in the, the Koha US uh, test server right now. And I'm going to edit one of these items, uh, Day of the Jackal, my favorite book to edit and mess around with. So I went in here and I put uh, the call number as F Forsyth 1970. And I put about five spaces in front of it. And I put a bunch of spaces between the F and the Forsyth, and then I put a bunch of spaces after it. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the, but you don't see that in the call number in Koha because the, all those spaces collapse in the HTML. So this piece of jQuery here, what we're doing is we're saying whenever the class is input mark editor, which is what the class is on all of these, uh, on all of these boxes, uh, the class is input mark editor. And every time that we take the cursor out of there, so um, that's what blur means. Uh, focus means you put the cursor in the box. Blur means you've taken the, the cursor out of the box. So every time we take the cursor out of a box, it's going to look at the input mark editor and it's going to identify that and it's going to take the value that's already in there, and then it's going to use some regex. I'm not an expert with regex. I can do a few things in regex, but this is the regex code, and it's saying every time we see a double space, it's going to take out that double space and put in a single space, and then it's going to trim any, any spaces from the beginning and the end of the field. So I'm going to save that and put that on our, our test system. I'm going to leave this page and come back to it so that the jQuery will run on it. And then when I go back here, so all of those spaces are in there. And if I focus on this box and then blur away, all of those spaces, all of the unneeded spaces disappear. Nice. So it was a pretty simple fix. It, the, the nice thing about this for the library where this is a problem is they can run that report just for their library and see which are the things that they have with leading and trailing spaces in and extra double spaces. And they don't have to go in there and manually edit the field. All they have to do is go in, focus on that box, take the focus out of the box, and then save it, and they will collapse automatically. Can you go back to the code for a second? Yeah, sure. Just a question on on something. Um, Hopefully it's a question I can answer. <laughs> so you, you said that that regex looks for uh, double spaces and replaces it with a single space. So what happens if you have three spaces? Uh, it's what it does is the, the regex here, this first one is uh, the start of a word and the slash G is the end of a word. And the slash S is for space and the plus is saying anytime you've got a space 
repeated more than once. Okay, so it's not. So there could be not, fifty not spaces. Double. Okay, it's not necessarily double spaces. There could be fifty spaces there. There could be two spaces there. There could be three spaces there. It's saying all of those spaces, take them when there's multiple spaces and replace it with just one space. And that's okay. what this this bot this uh, quotes there is saying. Take all those and collapse them into one. Okay. My other question is, does this work with the advanced editor? Uh, that I don't know. Um, and when you're editing items, you're not editing the the advanced editor doesn't do the item editing. Okay. So that shouldn't be an issue for the item record. Um, or originally, I thought, wow, this would be great to keep people from accidentally doing it in a title field or for doing it in the note field. But then I realized that I can't use that broad of a of a uh, of a class search in the bibliographic record because there are some fields like uh, the leader and the 000 and the 008 and the 006 where there has to be there have to be double spaces mm -hmm. because those spaces are being used um, as placeholders right and so if you put that in the the bibliographic record editor you Sorry, would have to find a way that the fields where double spaces are important or multiple spaces are important, um, you would need to find a way to prevent it from affecting those fields, which would mean digging in and, and making the jQuery more complicated because you're going to have to to more specifically target which fields this works in and which one which ones uh, it doesn't work in. So you're saying so were you saying that it does or does not have any effect with advanced editor? As far as I know, it should not have any effect on the okay. advanced editor because the advanced editor, I don't think, uses that class input mark editor. Okay. So. So, so that's it. That's if you want. If you if you want to find uh, these kinds of records, how would you go about it? You you showed us a, a report. Can you tell us a little bit more about the report? Sure, I can talk more about the report. That's it was. Um, let me see if I can figure out which report it was. So, this one. So the the sequel for this report. Um, it starts out simple. I'm looking for the item number, and the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the item call number, and I'm saying anytime I see a space, I'm doing a replace in the item call number, and I'm replacing all the spaces with pipes. And uh, then I'm also getting the barcode number and the home branch and the holding branch. And uh, if I, I'm doing all these things that I do just for my libraries, I'm, I'm saying, you know, if the item uh, permanent location and the current location are the same, then just use the permanent location. Otherwise, show me the permanent location and the current location in parentheses next to it. And then I'm showing the item type and the collection code. And then the call number and the copy number, uh, if it has a copy number, not of all of our libraries use the copy number. And then the author and the title. And then what the length of that uh, field is. Mm -hmm. Then, because I don't like to look at the codes, um, like where the home branch is, I don't want to see the branch code. I want to see the branch name because that's easier for our libraries. So I've got this um, subquery that puts the that replaces the branch codes with the branch names, and then I've got a subquery that replaces the uh, locations with the location the location code with the location name, and then I've got the item type description instead of the item type code, and so on and so on. So I get all of those things, and then what I'm doing to get um, to get a uh, the length of the call number with and without the spaces is I'm running one that shows the call number length. If you do a search replace and get all and collapse all the double spaces and the beginning and trailing spaces, and then one that counts all the all the the whole thing with the spaces. And so that's why when I run the report, it's asking me. First, it's saying which library do you want to look at, and then it's saying how many, 
how many lines do you want to go? How many where the the um, where the call number and the label creator is going to have more than X number of lines? And I found nine was a good place to start. So, and the, that's one thing I would say that is custom about this is I have a drop down menu. I have an authorized value that's just digits. Um, I think it's single digits up through 100, and then after 100 it goes, or I guess it's single digits up to like um, 35, and then after that it just goes by fives, and after 100 it goes by 25s. Okay, cool. And I think if we were to blow this out and really take a good look at it, so I've got 1,038 in our system. There are 1,038 call numbers that are going to have more than nine spaces in them for the label creator to deal with. Wow. Which is a lot. Yeah. And uh, it's running now to, to look at the full report, but there's this last column. You know, this one here has 183, 193 spaces in it. True. Um, some of these are pretty insane. And like I said, it's somebody just making a mistake. It's somebody finished typing their uh, their call number in, and then they leaned on the keyboard. Yep, those things happen. Yeah, people make mistakes all the time. Um, although, now that I've got this code in there, that's a mistake they can't make. The, the more we can automate these kinds of things, um, the fewer mistakes people will make with when when they when they're in a position to make a mistake like this. Yeah, that's the one thing that kind of sucks about mistakes is you uh, generally and particularly in this kind of work. You know the person that uh, in Burlingame that cataloged this thing that has eighty one spaces in it. Um, they. This is an item that was. Uh, well, 229, this is an item that's probably five or six years old in our system. And they, at Burlingame, they don't even work there anymore. I can guarantee that they're not there anymore. If it's if it's more than three years old, that's a mistake that the person that made the mistake never even knew they made it. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thank you very much. It's very helpful. And uh, yeah, I I enjoy anytime we can, we can, uh, do some auto correction in the system uh, to to help staff along. Um, I know that uh, our frontline staff we have, you know, they're editing patrons all the time, and there's there's many times that uh, mistakes can be made. Maybe one of these uh, days uh, in the near future, I can show how I've uh, developed some code to do kind of some something along that lines that uh, will help. Um, uh, with uh, auto correction in uh, the patron records, uh, right? I've developed quite a bit, and it was quite the challenge because uh, you know there are cases, uh, one-off cases, uh, occasionally that we run into, and it's like, okay, so how do we work around that? So I've been tweaking as we go along and, and finding ways around uh, or solutions to to solve simple problems uh, or common problems. So yeah. Well, we did the video about the driver's license plugin and the barcode using the barcode scanner to scan somebody's driver's license to fill in the name, birth date, yeah, uh, address, and that's one. Of, that's the thing that I love about it is that you know, there, it's so easy when you're at, at the circulation desk, and maybe it's busy and you're trying to enter all of that data, and it's so easy to make a mistake. But if you scan the driver's license, it will be exactly the same as it is on the driver's license. Yep. And that no, kind of no stuff. No accounting if the driver's license is done. Yeah, right. so long as the person, you know, so long as Patty and Selma weren't asleep when they were making the driver's license down at the, down at the uh, DMV, yep. um, it should match. Or my old driver's license, because my middle name has 13 letters, um, my middle name was always wrong because they, in Idaho, they couldn't put 13, a 13 letter middle name on a driver's license. But they tried. <laughs> Middle name, not so bad. Try first name. My my name gets truncated all the time to Kristoff. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, these kinds of uh, uh, tweaks really make it uh, uh, easier for staff. 
until until you run into that one-off case where it's like it's making their life uh you know insane because they can't enter this the information correctly then you have to go back and find a way to 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 get around that so right but you know those one-offs don't happen all, all too often and, and you know in the most cases we're, we're really helping staff along so yeah all right great edits and uh thank you again for sharing the code and we'll have all that online uh with this video and and we will see you guys in another two weeks see you later